What's going on guys? It has been, I don't know, a really long time since my last video. Um, I've, I've gotten some ideas from people on videos that they want to see. Um, I've thrown some suggestions out there. Should I do this? Should I do that? I've gotten some good feedback on that stuff. The problem is that life gets really busy. Um, there's a million things to do. There's just not enough time in the day to be totally honest. Um, I have been slacking on it. That's not the only reason. They're kind of nerve-wracking for me, to be totally honest. Um, some people get behind the camera and they're really, really comfortable. Some people are like myself and uh, it's not their cup of tea. But it's something I force myself to do because I want to try to help out as many people as I can that are in the carbon community. I have that done for me and I feel like it's, it's kind of my duty to pass that torch on. So um, a while back on my Facebook page, I... I put up a little post saying maybe I'll do a Q&A type of video and this is kind of the answer to that. I had a lot of people comment and give great suggestions on um, some questions they'd like answers to that maybe I hadn't been super public about or just maybe hadn't come up. Well this is going to be kind of a forum for, for those questions to be answered and so that everybody can hear them all at once. Um, I basically took uh, everything that was commented and I narrowed it down to 10 questions. I'll, I'll probably go off on tangents because that's how I am. Um, anybody who knows me well knows that. But I'll just, I'll get right into it. Um, what initially got you interested in carving? That's, that's a really easy question to answer and really difficult at the same time. I, uh, I was very big into bushcraft, uh, I don't know, five years ago, maybe something like that. And I amassed so many things, like thousands of dollars worth of gear and merchandise. And I got to the point where I realized that it was kind of defeating the purpose of, of bushcraft. It was, it was really glamping, you know, glamorous camping. And so I said to myself, what, what can I do with what's out there? I started building shelters and, uh, and, and this and that. And naturally I, you know, I can't remember where I saw it online, but I saw that somebody was carving cuxas and that kind of led me to look that up on YouTube. And so bushcraft was my start. I'll get more into that here in a second. Uh, on question number two, who is your inspiration? Um, Jeff Ballantyne, who now owns Ring and Grove, um, I don't think he carves much anymore because I can't really, you know, make that assumption for Jeff, but I, I know uh, it was bothering his body, his joints and stuff like that. His, I, I know he's getting forearm cramps really bad, but he's he's a very successful carver. And he's successful at uh, making wooden rings as well. Um, but yeah, I saw Jeff had a four-part series on carving cuxes on YouTube, and I said to myself, well, I don't have the money to buy a cuxa, so I gotta figure out how to carve one, and then realized, you know, after watching that, that the more basic thing to start with was to carve a spoon. So I went out on one of my bushcraft trips with, um, I think, I think my mom actually, and, and maybe a friend or two, and kind of picked up a stick and just started whittling and something in my mind just clicked and I started trying to turn it into a spoon. Long story short, it ended up getting snapped in half. And, uh, so I, I don't currently have that spoon anymore, um, but that was my start. I do have the first spoon that I ever carved. I keep it just to keep myself humble and to remember where I came from and see if I can get the camera to pick up on it. This is it. It is not exciting. It is not very useful, not pretty to look at. I don't even know what wood it was out of. I think it was, I think it was something coniferous, to be honest, something I probably shouldn't have carved a spoon out of. But I've never used it to, to stir with or eat with or anything like that. But this was my start. So anybody who says, oh my God, you've gotten so good at, at carving so quick and just assumes that it happened on its own, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of practice, a lot of cutting yourself and stitching yourself up. Um, but let me move on to question three. Who helped you most in your early days? Um, you know, I can throw out as many names as I want, and there, there are people that come to mind specifically, but the, the biggest help to me was just joining the Green Woodworking groups on Facebook, um, checking out Instagram and seeing what other carvers were up to there, um, asking a million questions, not always getting a million answers back. But for the most part, um, Anybody that I reached out to, you know, reached right back. So the biggest group that I can think of that, um, you know, contributed to my success, if you want to call it that, is uh, the Spoon Carving, Green Woodworking, and Sloyd group on Facebook. It's probably the biggest group on there for carvers. Um, and they've got big names, small names, no names in there. 
and you know it's, it's for everybody so for anybody who's watching this who isn't in that group I suggest you you know send a join request um, if you are already in that group and you're not getting the results you want start asking some questions see what people are using tools wise um, see what woods people are using and make sure to check out the file section in that group too because a lot of the common questions can be answered there um, without having to put up a post and um, if you're the type that you know you don't want to really be put on the spotlight um, you know check there first because they'll have some good answers for you um, question number four here is are your materials sourced locally yes and no um, I like to get as much of it as I can from from around here or at least around where I used to live um, I'm from Port Huron which is about a year for or a year I'm sorry um, an hour from where I live now in Auburn Hills um, I still have some some connections back there my family lives back there and so sometimes I'll get wood from my mom will need like I just got some cherry the other day that my mom needed to cut down cherries are great wood for carving so it kind of helped her out helped me out um, I've got a very good friend named Vince who ships me wood all the time just out of the kindness of his heart he's just a, he's a great guy I'll get more into him in a second um, but other than that you know sometimes I'll purchase wood sometimes I'll find wood but you know for the most part my stuff is sourced locally um, what are your favorite woods to carve I would say right now apple is my my absolute favorite apple or crab apple any variety of cherry um, black cherry regular cherry ornamental cherry I really enjoy birch which is, if you're new at carving is probably a good one to pick up because it's it's soft enough to where you know you're not gonna kill your hands or your joints trying to carve it but hard enough upon drying to where you know it'll hold up to use so um, really most fruit and nut woods I, I really do avoid um, black walnut although it's beautiful and it, it tends to carve really easily it really has a bad habit of dinging up your blades and, and making it so that you're spending more time sharpening or honing than um, than actually carving so question six is what were your early struggles and how did you overcome them I don't know if it's a struggle necessarily it's something that I think all of us as carvers need to go through but I started off with some subpar tools like I I don't even remember what the first knife I used I can't even call it a carving knife I think it was just a like a Mora all around it might have been a Mora companion to be totally honest um, which isn't geared towards carving I mean it can it can do the job but it's not up to the finer de details in my opinion but um, some of these tools you know you you learn from them you realize well this geometry is not perfect for what I want to do um, and you think just because it's sharp that it's it's a good knife it's, it's just not true a good knife will will hold up well doesn't need to be sharpened often or honed often um, and is best for the task that you do most um, a lot of people can get away with one or two knives literally one hook knife and one sloyd knife and obviously their axe um, and that might be all they use me personally I've got I've got a ton of knives back here and I use all of them not not often some of them but you know I, I do have uses for them and I like to uh, have specialty tools um, but you know having started with those subpar tools and and gone down gone on to what I have now some of it actually hasn't really changed like um, these two right here are just Mora 106s which is something that a, a beginner carver would start with and I have really nice handles that I've got put on my buddies but um, you know, I had some hand forged stuff and went right back to these just because for the money they're great, the steel is great, and they, they do the job I need them to do, and they're, what, $25 or something like that, so whoever thinks that you need to, you know, spend a bunch of money to get started carving, it's just not true. You, you probably do it for $100 easier, maybe less. Um, another struggle was lack of technique, and, you know, some of that can be avoided, like you can, you can learn the ins and outs, I guess, um, before you start carving, but you won't really understand it the way you need to. So your lack of technique is, is really only gonna make you grow naturally, you know? Don't force yourself into trying to be the best right off the bat. I'm not the best. I, I don't expect that I ever will be. Um, but constantly evolve. Um, look at look at other techniques that people are using. Um, there's, there's plenty of stuff online that'll show different knife grips and stuff like that. Um, Barnaby Carter, Barnaby Spoon from the UK. Um, he's got he's got little cards that you can buy or posters you can buy um, that you can put right on the wall and show you different knife grips or grain orientation and that's just some of the stuff that you have to learn and it's some of the stuff you can ask questions about in that group that I talked about or any other group um, another 
really big struggle was poor safety. You, you get so excited about, you know, maybe you're coming to the end of carving your spoon or carving whatever you're carving and you're trying to hurry up. You're trying to get it done so you can see that end result. You really, really got to take your time. I've even, even lately gotten some really bad cuts. Um, some of you on my social media have, have seen these cuts. Some are and, or aren't related to green woodworking. But um, no matter what you're doing, no matter what kind of project you're doing, safety is paramount. Um, one, one wrong slip and I won't be carving again. That's, that's how it is for all of us. If I'm not careful enough or not lucky enough, I guess, um, I can end my carving like that. So I don't want that to be the case. I really need to practice safety every time I pick up the knife or the axe or, or anything sharp. Um, and that's not just while you're carving either. For example, like keep your knife sheathed. If you're not using that knife, you just plan on putting it down for a minute, throw a sheath on it. Um, I've had times where I've just like set it over here or over there thinking to myself, it's out of the way, I can't hurt myself with it. And then I've reached for something, bumped it off, and had to go like this because I was about to take the tip of a knife, you know, into my foot. So a lot of these, and you know, people can poke fun as much as they want. Um, you laugh now, it will happen. There, there are ridiculous circumstances that you can't even imagine if you're, if you're not being as safe as humanly possible. So hopefully, um, you know, you guys can poke some fun at my mistakes and not have your own. Um, so number seven here is what do you do when you lose the drive to carve? For me, I used to, I just used to put the knives down and I would just ignore it to be totally honest. And then I'd come back and I would feel like I was starting all over again. And I really hated that feeling of feeling like a novice, like every couple months when, you know, I, I try to get back into it. And so now instead of doing that, I just, I don't burn myself out like I used to. I used to, you know, crank out seven spoons roughed out in a row or try to finish as many as I could in a sitting or in a day or in a weekend or whatever. Now I just, I really kind of try to realize what my comfort level is and stop there. Um, and if that doesn't do it for me, I will do other tasks that are related to carving. Like I will, I make and sell um, uh, dowel sharpeners for hook knives. I've made um, flat sharpeners for sloyd knives. Um, I actually, I make and sell quite a few things, strap scrapers, all kinds of things. Um, and those kind of things keep you in the mindset of your craft without having to burn yourself on do, burn yourself out on doing it. Um, question number eight here is how do you keep your wood green? The biggest way, if you can't carve it quick, and I generally can't because, you know, life happens. I've got a kid. Um, I've got a significant other. I... You know, there's a million things going on that I can that I can bring up, but this bin right here literally has logs and wood in it. Um, I will keep logs that are small enough to go in there. In there, I will keep water in there for maybe a week or something like that. Dump it out, rinse the logs off. Sometimes I actually scrub them by hand. I know that sounds ridiculous, but um, I don't want them getting all disgusting or growing anything. Um, um, and after a week, I'll change out the water and, and, you know, put it back. And I just grab out of the water when I need it. And it keeps them as fresh as they're ever going to be. Um, sometimes, actually, I've got a couple pieces of beach in here from my buddy Vince that was not so fresh. And it's still floating right now. The stuff I've had in there for a while has sunk all the way to the bottom. So I know it's waterlogged. It's, it's ready to be carved. It'll carve nice. And um, this beach, however, um, something I've done in the past is trying to rehydrate logs. So... You know, you'll notice right as soon as you throw it in there, it bobs right up to the top. And by about the time that stuff starts sinking, and I know it's waterlogged, that's when I'm going to touch it. I'm not going to kill my knives on it or kill my joints or my hands on it. Um, but that's, that's basically my one method of keeping it uh, fresh. Generally, in the summertime, I'll do this outside. That way I can just take the garden hose and hose it all off or refill the bucket, etc. And it's not super convenient having it in the house, I guess. Um, but I've recently moved my setup indoors. I don't want to say recently, but when it started getting cold out. And I live in Michigan, and that doesn't that doesn't take long <laughs> for it to start getting cold every year. But um, I do all of my stuff inside now. I split my logs in here. You know, I form my billets in here, my spoon blanks. I do all my carving in an 8x4 area, which sounds probably impossible to some of you because a lot of you got a lot of tools, and I actually do too. But I keep my stuff tidied up pretty well. I'm fairly good at organizing, and... Uh, this space just works out really well for me. Um, if anybody's got any questions about this, um, feel free to let me know because 
you know, I'm sure I can probably bring up some tips that you guys might find handy. Um, so question number nine, what do you finish your spoons with? Generally, any spoon that I sell, and I've got, I've got a whole basket of them right here, so let me know if anybody wants them. Um, I finish it off with walnut oil. I find that Mahoney's is a, a really, really good, solid, reputable brand that works well for me. Um, any drying oil, though, any, any oil that cures that's food safe. So this topic gets beat to death online, but you know, I'll, I'll bring it up again if it can help somebody. The top ones are tongue oil, that's T-U-N-G, not T-O-N-G-U-E. Um, linseed oil, walnut, I think people are using grapeseed oil now, hemp seed oil, things like that. Um, but walnut, tongue, and, and linseed are the top three. People also use tried and true, uh, which is the Danish oil. I personally use the walnut oil. I love the fact that it has almost no flavor, has no color to it whatsoever. If you got a wood that's that's white, it stays white. If you use linseed oil, for example, it turns your, your white wood yellow, and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, that's what I use for my initial oiling. You know, after I, I will 90% rough out a spoon, let it hang on the wall where you see these ones right here. Hopefully you can see them in the shot. Um, once they're dry and I have time, I get to them, do my finishing cuts. I will burnish them and oil them with the walnut oil. But then, you know, people want to know, hey, after I've used this for a while and it starts looking kind of dull, um, what can I do to protect it? What can I do to keep it looking good? And what I personally use is I got a good friend named Vincent Pettit. He is with VKP Wood and Metal, and I'm sure you can't see that from here, so let's see if I can get a focus or not. That's the tin, it's three ounces. His Instagram is at VKP Wood and Metal, all one word. And this stuff is phenomenal. It's called, he calls it Wood Balm, and it's basically just a mix of beeswax and walnut oil. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, three ounces, that can't last very long. Well, I'll be honest, I beg to differ. I have done several spoons with this stuff, and I've still got plenty left. It doesn't even look like I've really touched it, to be totally honest. So that stuff has been absolutely awesome. Um, he sells that for $15 a tin. Um, we also have an arrangement going on where if somebody buys a spoon from me, I will sell them one of his tins for $13 with one of my spoon purchases. And then, you know, I, I send money to him and it helps everybody out. It allows me to give my customers, um, you know, an option for protecting their spoons that, you know, they want to keep that longevity, keep it looking good for a long time. Um, but again, it's VKP Wood Balm and his Instagram tag is at VKP Wood and Metal. So my last thing on here was not, it was not even a question that was asked to me. It's just something I figured would be a good way to close this out. Um, what's next? To be totally honest, I don't really know. And I, I kind of I kind of enjoy being able to say that. I don't have some set plan. Um, am I gonna teach in the future? Possibly. Am I gonna get into cuxes or shrink pots or you know whatever else? Maybe. Maybe I might do shrink pots. I don't see cuxes happening again in the future. Um, anytime soon anyways, but um, I might give shrink pots a shot. Um, but really, I just wanna, I wanna refine my technique. I wanna get quicker at carving. Um, and I just wanna keep learning. Um, everybody keeps thinking that there's like these, these big gurus in the carving world. And I mean, there's people that have put their time in, you know, they got years and years under their belt and they've made their mistakes and they still make them. Um, but they're no, they're no more a student than I am or than you are. Everybody is here to learn, we're all here. We're supposed to be sharing this knowledge. It's not just supposed to be something that we watch each other struggle over. Um, you know, it's, it's a brotherhood, it's, it's, a, it's a family community, the, the carving community. So really, the more I can learn, the more I can teach you guys, if, if that's, you know, what you desire. Uh, if you're not going to learn it from me, I suggest absolutely, like I said, join that group, Spoon Carving, Green Woodworking, and Sloyd on Facebook. There's people in there that have been carving way longer than me. There's people that are far better than me, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, they know all different facets of this um, this thing we call green woodworking. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm, I, I've changed gears a little bit. It used to be that I was doing a lot of uh, just plain Jane, um, 
you know, eating spoons. I would take it from a straight piece of wood and turn it into an eating spoon. And this one I actually just roughed out today before this video, so that'll dry. But I'm branching off with some different stuff. Like I got a soup spoon over here. I'm doing a lot of coffee scoops. I don't know what it is, but I enjoy them. It's a bit of a challenge because they're smaller in the hand. There's less to hold on to, but you know, there's nothing wrong with a challenge. Um, I'm getting a lot into uh, into crooks lately. Just crooked branches and turning them into spoons. And I've been having a lot of fun and uh, a lot of challenge with that lately. You will see more um, cooking implements this year. I have in the past not done a lot of those because I, I mean, it takes up larger pieces of timber first off and I generally don't get large diameter logs. Um, but I, I got a little kick in the pants from a customer that, um, that wanted something custom done for his wife and it got me thinking, and so I, I said yes to the commission. I put out a couple cooking spoons, and then I put out a few more, and a few more, and a few more. So now I just kind of pepper them in whenever I really feel like it, or whenever I pull a piece of wood out of the bin that looks like it could be good for it. Um, but like I said, coffee scoops. I think you're probably gonna see a lot of different designs on coffee scoops for me this year. Um, I honestly don't know what it is, like um, the Swedish, style eating spoon has been my go-to for almost my entire spoon carving career which by the way is a little over three years now um but i'm starting to branch off now um and it's not out of boredom it's i think it's really out of curiosity like what can i do with wood that's that's what i started doing this for to begin with um and i think whatever my last day is carving that will still be the intention on that day and that's probably the best goal you can hope to have is just to keep making as many things as you can, to keep broadening your horizons, to keep pushing yourself farther and farther, and um, to put out something you're proud of at the end of the day. So that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have for my 10 questions. If you guys have anything else, feel free, please, um, drop questions in the comments. I will make sure to answer them as they come. I've always been really good at that. Um, I think that's probably about all I got for you. If you guys want some spoons, get a hold of me. I got tons and tons right now. Scoops, spoons, all kinds of stuff. Weird things. <laughs> but that's all I got for you. You guys take care, and I will see you in the next one.